Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to build the DIY motorized projector shelf from my hidden home theater video. This could potentially be a pretty niche video, so if you fall in the middle of this Venn diagram of people who own an ultra short throw projector, enjoy DIY projects, and have found this video on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so the algorithm can find more people like you. Or maybe there's some other reason you want to build a motorized shelf. If so, let me know what that is down in the comments. Actually, I lied. I'm not gonna show you how to build the motorized shelf for my hidden home theater video. I'm gonna show you how to build a better one. In fact, this is the fourth motorized drawer that I've built in the last month. And after trying out almost $500 in different parts, I think I've finally perfected it. So instead of you spending over $2,000 for an off-the-shelf solution or struggling through your own project, I'm gonna give you the plans for free thanks to Eufy who sponsored this video. Their new Floodlight Cam 2 Pro replaces your existing floodlight and combines a 2K resolution pan and tilt camera with 360 degrees of sensors to detect movement in any direction for quick and automatic motion tracking. The Floodlight Cam 2 also includes Eufy's excellent person detection to only alert you when there's actually a person and not just a moving bush or a shadow. In addition to the excellent camera, the Eufy Floodlight 2 Pro has three powerful adjustable banks of LEDs, providing up to 3,000 lumens of completely customizable light output. In addition to the Eufy app, you can also cast these directly to your Amazon Echo or Google Home screens, which can also independently control the spotlight features. Check out Eufy's awesome Floodlight 2 Cam Pro using the link down in the description. So after four iterations, here's what I finally ended up with. You can see that the main structure is made from 2020 aluminum extrusion and that everything is self-contained on one removable unit, so you won't need to make any permanent changes to your furniture. The drawer is driven by a long lead screw using a stepper motor and the whole shelf hooks over the back of your existing furniture and tightens down to almost any shelf thickness. Also, because we're using aluminum extrusion, which is kind of like Legos for adults, it's really easy to make modifications to this design if you need to increase the length or width of the shelf for your exact projector or furniture. In this video, I'm specifically going to show the measurements for building a shelf that's 475 millimeters wide, 500 millimeters deep, with 380 millimeters of motorized extension. And I've made an Amazon page that has all the exact parts that I used for this size. But it's pretty easy to adjust the dimensions to use a different length of drawer slide if the shelf is too big or too small for your location. It's also worth noting that these Amazon listings go out of stock all the time, but the parts in this project are super generic. So don't be afraid to order from a different listing to get a better price or faster shipping on any of the parts. Before we start, you should check to make sure that this motorized shelf is even going to work for your setup. You can install it on top of your existing furniture or on a shelf that has a top. But make sure that you have at least 50 millimeters of clearance above your projector to account for the additional height of the motorized shelf. Also make sure that the projected image doesn't get blocked by the top of your shelf when fully extended. If all that looks good and we're going to go on, then it's time to get cutting. The side pieces and rear cross brace are going to be 500 millimeters exactly. So if you order the 500 millimeter aluminum extrusion, those are ready to go. The front cross brace that holds the pillow bearing needs two lengths that are 237 millimeters each, and the two back pieces need to be at least 100 millimeters. But if you're mounting it to a thick shelf, you should make it even bigger. Last, you're going to need six pieces that are 45 millimeters. If you've never cut aluminum extrusion before, you can use almost any saw to do it. Just go slow and wear safety goggles because power tools tend to send aluminum chips flying everywhere. If you don't have power tools, aluminum extrusion also cuts pretty easily with a hacksaw. Start with a back crossbar and slide two T-slot nuts into the extrusion, then rotate it 90 degrees and put two more T-slots in. Use those nuts and the corner brackets to attach the rear crossbar to the rear down tubes. Next, use the three-way corners to attach the rear down tubes and the side pieces. Obviously here we're only using two ways of the three-way connector, and inside angle brackets do exist, but I like that these have two set screws on the down tube since it's going to be resisting most of the torsion force when the shelf is extended. Also I like to have these little offshoots on the side for cable management since they're not in the direct path of the drawer. Next, put a 90 degree quarter bracket on each of the small 45 millimeter lengths and put two onto each of the side pieces and one on each down tube. Last, use some T-nuts to install the pillow bearing in the middle of the two 237mm lengths to make the front brace and then attach it to the side pieces. Flip the entire shelf over and install the rubber weather seal onto the bottom of the side rails and the top of the rear attachment arms. Next, using the T-nuts that you installed earlier, mount the stepper motor bracket in the exact middle of your aluminum extrusion using the bottom two holes. And then slide the rear cross brace down so that it's 38mm from the top of the extrusion on both sides and tighten it down. Then using M3 by five screws, attach the stepper motor to the stepper motor bracket, and then attach the lead screw nut to the mounting block, again using M3 screws. 
Then after making sure that the set screws are loosened, slide the lead screw through the pillow bearing, screw it through the mounting block, and then finally into the stepper motor coupler. If everything went well, the lead screw should be perfectly lined up, but don't tighten the set screws yet because you're gonna need to mark the end of the lead screw where it comes out of the pillow bearing and then cut it to size using a hacksaw. Do not use your miter saw to cut a lead screw. It will end very poorly. Once it's cut, reinstall it and tighten the set screws on the motor coupler, making sure one of the screws is on the flat portion of the shaft, and then tighten down the rest of the set screws on the lead screw side of the coupler and then on the pillow bearing. After that, we're gonna turn our attention to the shelf. Mine is made from three quarter inch plywood, but since these are just standard drawer slides, you can pretty much use whatever you want. If you don't have the tools to cut plywood, you can usually get it cut at your big box store for free. The size of the shelf for this build is gonna be 500 millimeters long and 474 millimeters wide. Before attaching the shelf to the slides, we're gonna pre-drill some holes for the mounting block. So mark a center line down the board and then make perpendicular lines at 61 millimeters and 81 millimeters from the back of your shelf and then mark 12 millimeters off the center line on each of those perpendicular lines. We're gonna use M4 by 30 screws to attach the mounting block. So a five millimeter or 316 drill will give us just the wiggle room that we need. After those holes are drilled, you also need to cut some clearance for the stepper motor when the drawer is all the way closed. So measure up 50 millimeters and make a notch in the back of the drawer about 100 millimeters wide. Once that's all done, it's now time to finish your shelf with any paint, stain, or sanding that you wanna do. Once all that's dry, remove the mounting portion of the drawer slides by lifting the black lever and pulling them out. Then attach them to your shelf using the included screws lining up the back side of the slide with the back side of your shelf. Grab the other part of the drawer slide and screw them onto the small 45 millimeter sections of extrusion. Unfortunately, the slides are slightly too thin to mount with the included M5 by 10 screws, so you're gonna need a washer in between the slide and the extrusion for each of the mounting points. Slide those mounting brackets back until the back of the drawer is lined up with the back of the shelf and tighten them down. The last thing to do is slide the shelf into those drawer slides and then line up the mounting block with the holes on the shelf and attach them with four M4 by 30 screws. If these don't line up properly, that means that your stepper motor mount is not in the right place. So go ahead and find the center again and fix it. At this point, if you wanna check clearances and test fit everything, just slide your shelf over the back of your existing furniture and move the bottom attachment arms up until the rubber weather seal is compressed before tightening them back down. Your projector and shelf should easily slide in and out by just manually turning the lead screw. If it's binding up at any point, check your alignments and clearances. If all is well, it's time to get that motor moving. And to do that involves some programming, and I've gone back and forth in my head about the best way to release this software, but I decided that Tasmoda was the best way to make the project accessible for everyone. For the non-Home Assistant users, Tasmoda is gonna allow you to create an Amazon Echo compatible switch to open and close your projector shelf, and Home Assistant people can still easily integrate with Tasmoda. If you really wanna use ESP Home, I've got a link down in the description for the YAML that you'll need for that. To install Tasmoda on your D1 Mini, first download Tasmatizer from the link in the description, and then also download the Tasmoda bin file that I have linked down there. This is a custom version of Tasmoda that I compiled so it can control the DRV8825 stepper driver. The standard Tasmoda bin file from the main Tasmoda GitHub will not work for this project. Plug your D1 Mini into your computer's USB port and open Tasmatizer. Select bin file and then point it to that Tasmoda bin file that you just downloaded. Check the boxes for self-resetting device and erase before flashing and then press Tasmatize. After that finishes, click on send config and put in your Wi-Fi information and then select template and paste in the information from the description. Once that information gets sent over, hit the get IP button and copy that IP address into your browser. The next thing that we're gonna do is hook up all the hardware. The four main components you'll need are a voltage converter, a D1 mini, a DRV8825 stepper driver and a 12 volt power supply. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time talking about how to hook these up because I think it's easier to just look at the wiring schematic, but basically the D1 Mini and the stepper driver are gonna be powered by the output of the buck converter set to five volts, while the motor power pins on the stepper driver are gonna connect directly to the 12 volt power supply. The stepper motor wires get attached to the driver in black, green, blue, red order. Then the D1 Mini connects to the driver via the D5, D6, and D7 pins. On this driver, we're gonna permanently short the sleep pin to the reset pin and then use the enable pin to sleep the device. Once all that's hooked up, go to the IP address of your new Tasmoda device and click on console. First, type motor move 20 and the motor should move in one direction. Then type motor move negative 20 and it should move in the other direction. Set the speed of the motor using the command motor RPM 300. If it doesn't work, here are some common wiring issues that you might run into. 
If your stepper motor is getting really hot when it's not moving, your enable pin is not hooked up properly, and you should disconnect it from power until you figure out what the problem is. The motor shaft should always move freely when the motor is not moving. If your motor is moving in the opposite direction that you think it should, that means that your A plus, A minus, and B plus, B minus wires are reversed, so you can either flip around the wires or just change the positive and negative values that you're sending. And last, if the motor only moves in one direction, that means that your DER pin is not hooked up to the right pin or not connected properly. If you built the exact shelf from this video, then it takes 9,900 steps to open and close the shelf completely. So after adjusting the speed, type in motor move 9,900 and your shelf should extend all the way out. Then type motor move negative 9,900 and it should go all the way back in. If it doesn't, you can fine tune the number of steps that you need to do that. And then remember that number of steps because you're going to need it. Next, we're going to add three rules to Tasmoda using this long command. Basically, this is going to measure a dummy switch, and if it turns on, it's going to move the motor in a positive direction for the number of steps that we specify, and then off moves it in the opposite direction. Now from the home screen of Tasmoda, you should be able to press the toggle button to move the shelf in or out. And if that works, then the last thing to do is turn on the Amazon Echo feature, which is in Configuration, Configure Other, and then select Belkin Wemo and give your shelf a name. Hit Save, and then ask your Echo device to discover devices, and it should come right up, and then you're all set. Home Assistant users can integrate Tasmoda using MQTT, or like I said, there is an ESP Ohm template on my website if that's what you're into. If you've got questions on this project, I don't blame you, and the best way to get a hold of me is to leave a comment on this video or come join the thousands of automators on the Hookup Home Automation Facebook group. Thank you so much to all my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the Hookup.